All right, welcome to the podcast on today's show with Cryo Healthcare founders. Thanks for joining us. Either one of you can take this question. For people who don't know, what does the company do? Cryo Healthcare, yeah, we freeze your body basically for better health. What we offer, most of our clients find us through whole body cryotherapy and referrals like you, for example, you found us because a friend told you about it. Um, so we, we basically help people decrease inflammation uh, at minus 240 degrees Fahrenheit and improve the quality of life. Because if you think inflammation is the source of everything, right? Right. Yeah, so, I mean, when you think about it, normal aging, there's a buildup of inflammation in your body. We know this more and more, and that's at the root of diseases when you think about it, from cardiovascular disease to autoimmune disorders, cancers. You know, we start with inflammatory processes in the body, and that's part of aging. I would say that's actually the driver of aging. So what we do, all our treatments are geared towards, first, first of all, fighting that back, but activating mechanisms that your own body has to, and whether that's you know stem cells or cryo or NAD plus injections, we're helping the body to really overcome this inflammation and to become healthier. So you feel good in your body again. You know you feel like you should, yeah. because most people don't even know. You feel crappy and you don't know what it is. You know? Here we are in, in what I would call yeah. like the this inflammation renaissance time. When everyone's yeah. doing cold plunges, Joe Rogan's yeah. doing that. And there's a whole world of now podcasters, Andrew Huberman, that are just right. educating the the market as a whole. Mm -hmm as to what it means to either be youthful or keep your body in, in tip-top shape. When did you first start this idea? Like, when were you introduced to cryo? You guys have been in business for a while, but give the listener a sense of, like, when you mm -hmm. first started, tell us what year it was and what was going on in the market that at that time. Yeah, so I was in Germany. We were dating. We married. Yeah. And back then we were dating, and I was working for Axel Springer, which is a media company in Germany, and it was, they were saying, you're going to try cryotherapy today. And I started doing research and uh, in Europe they mainly use it for rheumatoid arthritis patients. And I st started reading more and more and Jonas is a medical doctor. I was like, have you heard about it? And he he never heard about it. I never heard about it. Oh, and interesting. Okay. He luckily was in Germany visiting me in Berlin and wow. He went to the shoot with me, so I tried a treatment. And what, I, year, what year was this? This was 2008. Okay, yeah. okay. 2008, yeah. And I felt like a million bucks when I got off the okay. unit. Mm -hmm. I felt amazing. And the next thing I know, Jonas is doing research. Where can we buy a machine? So you knew you were onto something? Or what, what, was the re what were you seeing in the research that you said, oh, this is far more interesting than than I had originally conceived. Yeah, so I was, at the time, I was working in geriatrics. So I saw people in their 80s and, and sure. older. And in the US, if you're uh, that old, you're on a bunch of medications. A lot of pain issues, arthritis issues, memory issues, all these problems, right? So I was always thinking, man, I would love to do something that is non-pharmacologic. I always wanted to uh, focus more on real improvement uh, without always pushing meds, because that's kind of what we're taught. And um, it kind of was, you know, I, I didn't always agree with it, you know. But anyway, so yeah, so th I thought it was interesting, did the research. There were tons of publications. So in Europe, whole body cryotherapy is, uh, is a medical treatment, and they use it to treat rheumatoid arthritis is the number one issue. Depression, they treat a bunch of things with it, right? And then a lot of times, mm, a lot of times then the, not, not in all countries, but many European countries, you know, your insurance will pay for it. You might have a small copay, but that's about it. Now here, you know, not not yet here. Um, it's recognized. You know, we can use it. The FDA regulates the verbiage, what we can say. And even though it's funny, actually, I said uh, in our first on our first uh, website. Well, in Europe, here the studies from Europe. In Europe, it's a medical treatment, and it's for these indications. I had to take that down. <laughs> the FDA said, no, that might be misleading. People might think that's here, and be kind of whatever. But yeah, so we, I researched it, thought it was fascinating, and then we tried to get a machine here, and there was only one supplier that said, I can possibly get you a machine from, I think it was from uh, Ukraine, from Ukraine. And um, wow. I was like, I flew out to Texas, and he had the first machine sitting there in like a nail salon, you know, and it, was, uh, it wasn't a good machine at all, but it's the only thing I could get, you know, and then it was too expensive for me. He wanted too much money for it, and I said, I'm probably How not going to How much did he it. want? I forgot what it was back then. I think it was like 40000 or something like that for the machine, right? And it wasn't a good machine. This was a head-out machine, very simple. I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know if you can do that. Right and so, so, I, <laughs> so I left it at that, and then he calls me back a day later, and he goes, oh, I give it to you for half price. I was like, man, that's 20000 I don't know if I have that. So I see. I think I ended up getting it for fifteen or something. Like that. He just wanted to sell All right, it. good negotiation. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, it wasn't my, my skills. It was, I think, his desperation. His desperation, you know? yeah. Then got it set up and started. And where did you get it set up? 
So we had a uh, rented back then a, a duplex where the upstairs were, was where we lived, and we converted the downstairs to a clinic. Okay. So and our living Hancock room Park, yeah. was yeah. yeah. So your our home, first basically. office, our yeah. home. Yeah, yeah. And we, 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 we set it up nice. and uh, mm-hmm. had a And what year was this now? 2009. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And then we started, I thought I would now see a lot of geriatric patients, like elderly people, right? Okay. But our first clients were basketball players. And how did they yeah. find out about you? What marketing uh, are you doing? Like, what, what's going on? Kobe Bryant are? did it. And Kobe Bryant He did was it. at the forefront of everything. He kept secretive about it. And how did, you mean at your location or he no, just did it as yeah, a practice? He came, he came actually once to our location, a bit later. But okay. first we started with uh, mostly players from the Clippers. And where do you think yeah. they were doing it? Was it in Europe that they were catching on they, to this? Some of them had experienced it before somewhere else, probably there. Okay. And, and I didn't know anything about basketball. I just like all these tall people coming to my <laughs> clinic, right? And then we became... They're all was, so tall. Why? They're all so tall. And then I remember <laughs> we had um, uh, this guy come with his trainer, and he played for the Chicago Bulls, uh, Joaquin Noah. The trainer brings him in, and he was at that time... It was off season. It was the summer, and he was going to play for France because he had a French passport. Right? That's right. Yeah, and his team didn't like it because obviously risk of injuries and all that. But he was very much, hey, I'm I'm French. I'm going to do this. And yeah. trainer brought him in, and then he came almost every day. And funny, amazing guy. Yeah. We're we're still in contact with him once in a while. You know, we see him. He's, he's, a, he's a great guy. Yeah. So he was there, and then I was still working in geriatrics, mostly in, in Northern California. And he calls one day, right? He calls you and he says like, hey, um, I'm in town. Can I come by with some buddies, you know? And I'm out of town. I said, Mia, do you think you can freeze? We had and a, this we had, is still at your house. At our yes. house. Yeah. We, had a, we had a child already. We had a newborn baby. Yeah. Emilia was home. She says, fine. I was and nursing then, the baby when the, when, <laughs> then, the, when, the, when, Joaquin, when the entire team shows up in front of our doorstep. <laughs> so he brings wow. the entire... Plus the trainers. Yeah. Um, the whole and team. And I froze them all. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they, they needed it. Mm. I mean, they were doing it before a game. So it's very, oh, it's mo- like one of the most common question up from our clients is, when should I do cryotherapy? Mm. Like before a workout, after a workout, and it really depends what they're looking for. I mean, those guys, obviously, mm. the high performers, high athletic performers. So they need to boost the performance that they were coming before and actually after the game. Yeah. Mm. At what point do you guys realize you're onto something from a business perspective? So here you have the Chicago Bulls showing up. Yeah. Mm. You probably know what's going on yeah. early yeah. days, but... I mean, there was one day where we had 20 clients in our living room. Okay. Mm. And like Jonas, waiting? Like waiting, and it was just Jonas and I back in the day. Well, like it said, was our side business. Right, we got a bit more popular then. Then we, um, for some reason, got involved with uh, Dancing with the Stars. It was Maria Menounos. She was on Dancing with the Stars back then. Okay. She was dancing with uh, Derek. He, Everyone uh, knows Super nice guy. I mean, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, Max Schmokowski was on that show. I don't know if you know him. He was very um, uh, famous on show. Amazing guy. Also, we're still friends with him today. And they came from the show because they're all dancers. They got injured all the time. And so then they filmed at our place. And they were like, hey, Dancing with the Stars. This is what we do today, blah, blah, blah. They so we, filmed them yeah, going they filmed to your location. Part of, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so we got exposure. That's kind of cool. We had uh, news crews. Again, the players came. Clippers. We had a few other other players as well, and it was kind of taken off from there. And it was mostly that crowd. Then some people came with uh, more severe issues, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. A lot of actors, because this is such a weird world. The sports and entertainment world are very interconnected, mm-hmm. especially in LA. Yeah, yeah. Right. and they right. talk amongst each other. I think this is really their own world, and they just um, come by and super nice people. Um, yeah, I know. As always, when you hear about well. Working with them, this, no, we had all good experiences because people come to you with a particular issue. You can help pain or or the health is in some jeopardy and they want help, right? Right, And Mm -hmm. I think uh, it was pretty amazing. I know we had really amazing clients, met met really cool people. And at what point do you guys open up your first location? Yeah, after their yeah. one day um, when we had like 20 clients in our living room, uh, I look at Jonas and I think like, it's time now to open like a real <laughs> office because we outgrown right. the situation. And we had a lot of celebrities and they love that it's private. Yes. And some of them came maybe one, two times uh, to our like real office, let's say. I mean, it was a real office. It was just at our house and it was limited in terms of like treatment rooms. And uh, we added then localized cryotherapy. Then Jonas and I came up with the cryofacial. So we extended our service line down the line and then we said, you know, like now it's time. And we started looking for retail space, and our first location, our second location, was done on La Cienega and Melrose, a little bit farther up, where we are right now. And after one year, 
we outgrown that one and now we are a little bit farther down the block north from the Beverly Center. Wow. And so when you guys first got into it, obviously you're sort of cutting edge technology. What are you seeing in the marketplace as you guys open up your first location? Obviously the ball players know that people sort of at the forefront of new discoveries can afford it. At what point do you guys go, wow, everyone's on it now? Like it's so popular that we need to keep up with the demand. I would say about a couple of years in or a year and a half in, because at first also, I mean, keep in mind, there's more of, of, of a side business. I was still working full time as a physician up north, right? I had like, I was a traveling. student. And so we, we, we said, mm -hmm. we set ourselves some goals. We said, like, hey, if we make enough here that, you know, this place, this, this place we were renting, if, it, if this covers the rent and insurance, whatever, that's the first step. Then we want to move on. We're going to do something. So we had small goals, and we grew there pretty quickly, right? Yeah. We added modalities. You know, I did some, um, you know, lidocaine injections for pain. I, I, I used some uh, medications as well, but but really only things in moderation and only when needed. You know, and people liked it. I think you know it was very um, good to have modalities that had an impact on them, where they didn't uh, have to be chronically on meds and all that. You know, so we have a. I mean, I think that was successful. But then. Yeah, then people were catching on. We got different clients in. And once we opened there, it was inter interesting, too. We got hooked up. I forgot how that worked with, I think it was BMW. Yeah, BMW. Our grand opening um, sponsor. They said, hey, listen, we, wow. we our, heard about you guys doing event, cryo. Yeah. You, you have an opening. How, how about we pay for your opening? And we have our cars there. And if someone's interested, they can do test drives. So yeah. the cars out in front. Yeah, the nice BMW, the convertibles and whatnot. That's so, fun. so they had a whole fleet of BMWs outside. And... I said, okay. well, it, but you can't be pushing cars on people. This is our opening, right? <laughs> yeah, I said, no, we're not going to do it. It's just like... <laughs> they're not related good. at all. And, That's um, so funny. And I said, if someone is asking for it, then you can take their info if they're voluntarily, but you don't have to mandate it. from. And then they, it was back and forth a bit, and then they were okay with that. Okay. And we had catering. We had red carpet for <laughs> stuff. I mean, it was, it was nuts. Great, yeah. it was It was a really good opening. And they... Um, the budget was, I think, I think thirty or forty thousand dollars that they had for yeah, this. Back then, as you so know, they said, so back then, this was obviously in two thousand ten. Then, right? No, two thousand ten. Two thousand no, eleven. Two thousand eleven. They, I mean, the companies had a lot of uh, budget for like events. marketing events, yeah. and so yeah, then that grew from there, and um, then we outgrew that location, and then we doubled the size to our current location. But at what point do you guys start seeing competition, right? And so it's like, all right, people are on it now; it's becoming somewhat mainstream. You guys have introduced it. You've made it safe for another player. Yeah, at we what had point a, is the... We the, had a good three years of competition, Oh, yeah, I think, maybe right? even more. Three I wow. think the 2014-15 yeah. is when the first Oh, wow. So you had a bit of a head start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. competitors po popped up. And uh, basically, until today, I mean, there's new cryo places opening, and I see exactly the same treatment a protocol or like pricing what i have created at ucla i went when i when we started i went to ucla and i had a great marketing mentor and he was like picking our business as an example it's like amelia let's create a package for whole body cryotherapy let's do a three pack five pack ten pack eventually then we started doing memberships uh, so this is something that i actually came up uh, in school with yeah. which was great and everything gets copied until today almost um, identically identically yeah but we had a dis distinction so we i knew at some point and <clears throat> so it's funny Emilia didn't see that vision earlier later she did that this head out machine that that wasn't good i wanted a walk-in chamber i knew that because okay. the head out machine you have direct injection of like nitrogen so, you, so you have, your head has to be above that so you have enough oxygen the walk-in chambers is just room air that's cooled and i thought that was the future and we should have that so we then um, invested in our first machine. I, I flew out, I had to get trained because they didn't have technicians here how to install them. So I had to be at the factory. I got a two week training at the factory on how to install this machine. It was nuts. Then they okayed it finally, they signed off on it. So I got certified as a technician by that company. So they would allow me to assemble this here because it, they didn't have enough you know, uh, ways to get their staff here and all these things. So we got the first machine and it, it was great. It was, it was um, big enough for up to three people, but it had a lot of limitations. The temperature was okay, I thought. It wasn't great, but it was okay. But every two, three hours, they said, you can only run it for three hours, and then you have to defrost it for another two hours, and you can run it again. Because like, sure. in Europe, it's like, you know, we're, we're in the US. We're used to, hey, I want to cryo right now, I want to cryo. <laughs> in Europe, it's like, 
you do cryo from <laughs> 10 to 12 and then no more you know yeah. and they were and, also uh, gro grouping bigger groups yeah, together yeah. so when we did the research uh, before we bought the bigger unit we went to a facility close to my hometown I'm originally from Poland and cryotherapy it's a modality integrated into health system so there was a unit for five people a guy in ski suit putting five people inside and then walking in circles so if you know each other if you don't know each other it doesn't you would, matter you, you, you get like half grouped, naked in there you yeah. group I mean, together yeah. just in your yeah. shorts and, you and, go together. And, and, and socks and you're sitting on a bench <laughs> yeah but that's not applicable for the american market yeah. so right. they want to be alone they want to do it their way they want to have privacy yep so we had to completely that's interesting restructure so it's the almost like a cup of coffee or something like that yeah it, was, it was it was weird and you and with both people it was it was but that's that's how their model worked right and yeah but the issue with the machine furthermore was mostly the technical issues so like we gotta we gotta make this better yeah. yeah and so then we started developing the first prototype of a machine that got colder kept the cold longer and did not ice up and we actually patented that, that, that as well, ultimately, and got, um, we have an FDA ruling on it, and we got a UL approval. So our machines are tested, FDA approved. Yeah, we, we spent a lot of money on these things. But we did get them also to the point where they're absolutely the coldest of, of what you can experience, because the misconception today is, I mean, you, you brought up ice baths earlier, which is, right. which is good modality. Cryo is very different. In cryo, it's not how much time you spend in a chamber. It should be one and a half to maximum of three minutes. But it's a temperature you walk into. It's this flash freezing that triggers the effect. That's why you have you, you, you wear underwear and socks and protect your extremities, but you don't wear much clothing. You want as much skin exposure as possible. And this flash freezing, that triggers a release of anti-inflammatory cytokines. And that is like giving you a massive shot of uh, cortisone without the cortisone, without the side effects of cortisone to bring on inflammation in your body. And it works amazing, but it is a temperature, not the time. So most machines here are not up to par. I mean, they run them at temperatures minus 110 to minus 180. And you can tell when you look, and I see this on pictures all the time, if you can see the person inside clearly, if you can see the outline, if you can see what they're wearing, that means it's not cold enough because the fog in the machine is the crystallization of room air. There's always moisture in the air. Even here, we have beautiful air conditioning, so it's lower. But if I would run my, my machine in here, it'll be foggy inside. And the foggier it is, the colder it is, because you have more crystallization of that water and air. Right. People think that's gas. No, it's just room air, but the water crystallizes. So if you, if you don't get to that point, and I tell my staff today, if you can see the ceiling lights on the machine, it's not cold enough, make it colder. Mm -hmm. That's the dis distinction, and it's not a linear function. If you get to the cryogenic threshold, you get an effect, right? That's about like minus 200, let's say, Fahrenheit. But if you get colder than that, it's an exponential function. You get really better results, and we've uh, documented this. Yeah, So there's a, a, a huge benefit to go much colder. The risk is burns. You don't want to get in too long. That's why the three minutes is the max. For some people, I do two and a half. I don't do even three minutes, you know. And um, you've got to protect the skin because, I mean, at some point the skin is going to be damaged, right? So, But in the safe zone, at the temperature, it's like night and day. I can go in another machine, and we have people that are really sick that – can tell you right away. I went on vacation. I went to another place, walk-in chamber. It's nice, but didn't get at all the effect that I need. And what's the optimal yeah. temperature? Minus 220 to minus 240 Fahrenheit. That's what okay. we're running them. Yeah. That's the window. So they, so they know. And um, the interesting thing for us is in terms of when you talk about marketing on this, there's only one time to make a first impression. But for most people, either they go to another place where it's not as cold as we are, and they're right. fine with it, and they keep going. They don't know any better. Yeah. You know, like right. they don't know any if you better. go That's to a right. restaurant and you never had Mexican food, and That's you right. eat a Taco Bell, and you might like it. And, and you go to a really nice, high-end Mexican place, and you're like, wow, that's a world of difference, right? But un unless you make that step, you don't know. So the people that have come to us first, they experience with other places, they just come back to us, you know? Okay. And there might be a modality that we don't offer that they do somewhere else, but they always come back. The hard part is to explain this to someone who's, oh, I'm, do I'm, I'm already doing cryo, I'm doing it somewhere else, you know? And so we've done this now, where as a marketing thing that we thought of, we give free 20 second freezes okay. where you come in and sample it and you can tell you walk in with your clothes i mean it's not you don't have to sign anything no one's pushing anything on you yeah. just check out this is this is how it should feel okay 20 seconds 20 free, seconds in anyone who's and then you can tell oh shoot okay that's it. that's yeah the, that's the difference, yeah. Because the, the being scared is uh, one of the biggest challenges for a lot of our clients or people that might benefit. Because like, oh, yeah. I don't like being cold. Right. This is what I hear all the time. Right. So, well, you sometimes have to get 
uncomfortable to eventually get comfortable. That's right. right? That's so how that it, works. Most of our first time clients are so surprised that it's so tolerable and doable. Sure. Yeah. Uh, because it's a dry cold, so it's much actually convenient than an ice bath. Have you have you done ice bath before? Yeah, I have one in the back here, and oh, so I, I I'll show it to you later. We Let's have check that out. I yeah. got into the cold plunging world. I don't know, maybe like a year and a half, yeah. maybe two years ago. Yeah. I just fell in love with it, but you know, I think when people ask me why I do it, it's more about the mental challenge oh, yeah. of it. And so like choosing to put yourself in cold water while you're being an entrepreneur and trying to do all these other things, there's a, there's like a mental reset that choosing the most difficult part of my day right. makes something somehow everything else easier. Sure. And so it's, that's why I do it. Uh, obviously there's benefits yeah. as it relates to inflammation and I play tennis every day or, and so, you know, it's helpful, but for me, it's mostly the mental challenge that that I like the torture, I guess that I'm. Yeah, choosing. it's much harder to go in an ice bath than it is to go in a cryo chamber because it's cause it it's is, dry. Yeah. It's a dry cold versus a wet cold. Yeah. What are the differences that you can speak to? Yeah. So physiologically different. I mean, you you can at some point get the same tem uh, skin temperature in, in an ice bath or a cold plunge, but it's of course significantly warmer. The coldest cold plunge will be around the uh, freezing point, like 32 Fahrenheit. Right. Most are 40. Well, so yeah, like 44. Yeah. Yeah. Which is extreme already. Yeah. I've done it at 50 and uh, the first 30 seconds were brutal. <laughs> and I was like, and then I, I kept going out after, after 30 seconds. And I was like, no, screw it. I'm just going to stay. And then it became easy. I thought after a minute, I was like, okay. But uh, staying in then up to like, let's say three or five minutes, it also induces more uh, hypothermia. So it does cause a little bit of hypothermia. And that is actually a bit counterproductive. You know, it's interesting. So you have, first of all, you don't activate the um, release of anti-inflammatory proteins as much. There's some. So there's some anti-inflammatory effect, absolutely. But it's not the same as with uh, uh, cryogenics, with a uh, whole body cryotherapy. You have a much cold temperature, much more uh, different response to the cells, these are endothelial cells and epithelial cells so in the lower layers of your skin and in the capillary beds that due to this flash freezing release more of the um, anti-inflammatory proteins. So you have some, yeah, like you mentioned, there's this challenge going in. You got extreme simulation of blood flow, which is great in a, in a cold plunge. Yeah. And you have some anti-inflammatory effect, but this cooling, especially when you stay longer than three minutes, this hypothermia is actually a bit counterproductive. And you don't have that in cryo. There's a very short lowering of core temperature by about one degree, and then actually you feel very warm after. It's a different feeling after, right? And um, so I would, I think they're great modalities, both of them. I just wouldn't put them in the same, in the same category, you know. Yeah. And I, mean, and it's, I think um, this is really challenging for us as a business right yeah. now is because we lost a lot of clients because they have a cold plunge mm. at the house. Right. So they stopped the membership and they <clears throat> cold plunging. But yeah. uh, the feedback already that we've been getting is, mm -hmm. well, you know, my tendonitis came back. I'm achy. It's loud. It's cumbersome. So we believe that it's a trend. Like, in, like a lot of people got like the treadmills at the house. But it still doesn't replace the gym. Like right. you, it, it's it it was. It's just like a temporary thing that people are doing. Yeah. And also, if you really want to decrease your inflammation in your body, and you're looking mm -hmm. for a type of therapy, then cryotherapy would be um, the better option. Jonas compared it to a baby aspirin. If you take if you have a headache and you take one baby aspirin, you're still gonna have the headache. If you take two, the headache will. Two, two full aspirin. Two full aspirin. Yes, yes. No, two no, full aspirin. Two the, aspirin. And this is something that we compare with the temperature. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's kind of the differences between an ice bath and cryotherapy. Yeah, but you they both cannot have, put them together. Right, you, yeah. you have different goals for both. I mean, it's like when you're working out. If your goal is to gain muscle and you go to the gym and you lift weights, that, that's one way to do it. You can buy rubber bands or you can go jogging and you have some positive effect on certain muscles, but it's not the same effect, right? So I think both good modalities, I would keep them in, in slightly separate categories though. But, but yeah, but, but I think, you know, down the line that having your own equipment is great, also with an ice bath. And as you mentioned, if this helps you get your day going, I think that's fantastic. I, I don't discourage them. Mm -hmm. Some clients have said it's a bit, bit cumbersome, maintaining them, you filter the water, clean the water. The ones I don't understand at all are the public ones where you go to a place and do it there and uh, stepping in someone else's uh, <laughs> ice water. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Are you protective of your ice water? You only. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mine's in the back. It's yeah. really just me. Sometimes Nick. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. friends. Nick looks very clean. Um, so we, I think I would. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sometimes it's a thing yeah. where you'll have someone in there that doesn't look like they showered no. or they're doing. That's yeah. their shower probably at that point. There's right? that. Or, yeah. or just, you know, I think the public place, there's the places that offer them, like the, the saunas, the spas. Hmm. You know, if they're wearing lotion or something, then you have yeah. to change the water immediately. And so yeah. from a business perspective, you'll lose that room for the yeah. whole day. 
when you guys work with some of these amazing athletes, are you guys ever learning something like on the receiving end of either new modalities or new supplements that these guys are taking? Because in some in some way, the NFL players are, you know, I think mostly the NFL, they're at, they're at the cutting edge of medicine. And so are you guys ever learning anything from these these individuals? So it's interesting. So we actually sold then a machine to the Clippers and they okay. installed it. And we, we helped install when was it that? in their center. It's 2013. Yeah, somewhere there. And um, at that point, they already had their uh, facility down in El Segundo, and it was insane. It's the first time I've seen an underwater treadmill. I didn't, didn't know what that was. They have all wow. these crazy gadgets there. Cool. And uh, so they had it. And so I learned just in terms of um, their preparation, their mindset, how the athletes function, but also why they do certain modalities to feel better. In terms of technology, not so much. I mean, they, they uh, supplements some but they don't i mean that's not out of this world they're very clean on their things on their diet and they're very in tune with their bodies they know what works and what doesn't and they wouldn't do a modality unless it benefits them they're very uh, driven towards optimizing this stuff and again we only met uh, kobe bryant like a couple of times so we didn't have much interaction with him you know but i know him from from other interviews and all that he's very focused on or he was sorry very focused on his um regimen for optimal performance and health. I mean, a lot of these top athletes are like that. Yeah. They're also funny, man. These guys are nuts. I think it was, who was this? Uh, Joaquin Noah was uh, trying to teach us. We had a basketball hoop in our second facility, right? And he was trying to teach us how to, how to shoot. And his, his buddy came and says, are you nuts? This is one of the worst shooters in the NBA. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not yeah, going to teach you anything. He's more of a dunker, more of a layup guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was funny. I mean, they were, they're goofy. They're nice. They, um, Sometimes like big kids, you know. Yeah, of course. Uh, they have addiction to uh, cars mostly. Yeah. <laughs> Driving in. Very young. And, uh, but, but it's hilarious. I mean, you know, they. but it's fun and they're loving life and they're taking their job seriously, right? And you guys yeah. did a show or you were on the Kardashians. I saw that. Uh, Immediately was. was yeah, not me. No, no. Yeah. What was that like? So first of all, they canceled three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, was, I wasn't surprised. And uh, they came a few times. Mm. And I mean, it's, it's great exposure for the business. That's right, um, yeah. But they're not our core customer. Right. I mean, we have a lot of actors and athletes. And I would say they're not the clients that we see every day. Yeah. But they were um, nice, right? They were no, they were, they were really, really nice. Yeah. They loved it. Yeah. Uh, I think Courtney wanted to put one of our chambers in her beauty beauty room she called it the beauty room and what kind of bump do you guys see from that so it airs you know and then what do you see in terms of business we do have clients that see it and then they come in we were also featured in one of the beverly housewives shows okay and what i have noticed then it's like people even like the traveling to la see this on the show yeah, and, and then, then they come in because they've seen us on tv <laughs> so um that's, yeah but it's more <laughs> than you know it becomes more a novelty than or it's interesting because other people do it right and, um, right and i think the bread and butter people that come they're not so much influenced by that so there's a bit of exposure i think it's a good validation when you see people that you know are in that business doing these treatments that say you're doing already it's a kind of a validation of hey this is something that everybody's right now doing there seems to be something that helps people so in, from that perspective i think it's good but it, it doesn't it doesn't drive like a whole because our business is more about word of mouth i mean you have someone that comes and say hey this was great i, I like this because it, it's hard to explain sometimes and it, there is the fear of jumping into this cold um, temperature that's really hostile to your body it's not comfortable but you feel great after and it's just for a couple of minutes but then again you always can say that there's no good tasting medicine, right? If, uh, if, it's, if it tastes too good, it's probably not good for you. But again, I like it now. I find it as you, when you're doing your ice bath, if I'm going to cry, oh yeah, it's this thing. Yeah, I know it's harsh, but I don't feel it as a threat anymore. I'm in there, I'm relaxed. I know how good I feel after. And it just energizes my day. And that was the interesting part for me. So we talked to people from that drove far from Venice and other uh, places several times a week to do cryo. I'm like, why do, you, why do you drive that far to come up here and do it? And these are business people, like, like CEOs, like high-ranking people, right? Young, fit, no palpable disease or anything that I think could benefit. He says, you know what? He says, I get so much more done when I do cryo. I'm so much more focused that this is absolutely worth it to me. And again, these are people, the athletes is one thing they're in tune with their body, but, and, and you know this being a, in business or as an entrepreneur, if you feel you are functioning better, if your brain functions better, if you feel more energized 
and more positive and you get a lot more done, that's worth something for you. you yeah, know? that's everything. And that's that's the what whole they game. do. Yeah. Yeah. And having this feeling, I'm um, stepping out, feeling like a million bucks, ready to take on the day. That's, that's what drives it for some people, you know. And that was interesting for me. I always ask, what is the reason you do it? For some people I know, if you, if you have chronic pain, if you have arthritis, that makes a lot of sense to me, right? Yeah. Uh, athletes, I understand. But then that segment, that was interesting for me, that that's why they do it. And I think that's when you spend the ice bath in the morning. I think, you know, you, you optimize your day. That's right. Yeah. Do you ever think about it like, and, and the thing, I think the thing that's always hard with medicine in general is like, okay, so on YouTube, for example, if you're like a 30-year-old guy, you'll go on YouTube and search something like, why should I do cryo in my 30s? And then there should be some reason around that. Or like what supplement to take yeah. when I'm 42 years old, right? And Because the body starts aging. And so there's all these things. Do, do you ever have to think about how to bucket this for somebody? So it's like very digestible. And they're like, okay, when you're when you're 12, you don't need to do cryo. But then when you're 22, like what what's the, yeah. give people a window into Sort of yeah, that. although sometimes you do. So with, with children, we've treated some children, and we were for a few years on the board of the Arthritis Foundation in Los Angeles. And um, it was interesting because I don't know if you know, but uh, uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, so arthritis affecting young people, is very debilitating. As they grow, a lot of times joints, if it's not treated appropriately, can cripple. Fingers are deformed. I mean, you have all these issues, you know. And it was back then, we're not on the board anymore. It, it was, it was, I think it's a good foundation, but they were mostly driven towards uh, medication. You know, that was everything what all the fundraisers went towards and all that. But what we offered said, look, yeah, we want to contribute financially, yes, but also we offered whole body cryotherapy uh, free of charge to anyone under 18 with, ju with rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, right? And we, there are a few people that came, and um, it's hard for children to go in. My kids do it because they know it now. They love it. They love to do it. But it's a bit of a, uh, a shock even for children. And we would only keep them in a minute and a half. There's a clinic, uh, hospital in Poland that does it quite successfully. Because when you think about, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a big fan of pushing medications on everyone because there's always side effects, right? When you talk about medications for rheumatoid arthritis, the side effects are quite severe. They're mostly immunosuppressive medications. And especially for a developing person, that's pretty harsh. And corticosteroids, you know, this is not great. And they have a successful uh, treatment there. So we didn't get enough traction from it that I can give you very good, like, you know, like statistics on how people do. But that was, again, our drive for that segment. Now, when you're older, as you mentioned earlier, I think inflammation builds up and it starts even when you're young. And, you know, the excuse is always, oh, you're only in your teens or 20s, you can still eat candy and donuts and go out party late and have a bunch of alcohol. It builds up slowly. You might not feel it immediately, but this inflammation builds up and it leads now to people at younger and younger ages to be affected by diseases from type 2 diabetes to heart disease and others. So inflammation builds up. As you can decrease that inflammatory process and kind of reverse some of these effects, that's what this really does. We're trying to take all these uh, conditions that build up due to inflammation, actually reverse them again, allowing your body to heal that up really. That way you can have continued health, right? It's a hard sell for younger people because they don't feel the effects yet of their behavior. But then suddenly when it sets in, they're like, oh crap, what happened? Well, it's not out of the blue. If you see someone, a young athlete who throughout his, and, and we have friends like this, we're friends with a German uh, soccer player who was on a national team, and he's so in tune like these athletes I told you about, he's fit. He's now in his, in, in his 30s or, you know, and he's um, healthy and all that. But young people messing up their bodies over time, not thinking there's consequences they are. But I think what a lot of people need to focus on is not only like, even if you're not a professional athlete, it's not only on the performance and or the workout when you work out a lot, it's also the recoveries as is important. Yeah, and I think this is where we come in and uh, help to either before the workout too, that you are able to push yourself more throughout the workout or after for recovery. And I think that's the focus and that's the shift that I'm seeing over the past years, especially during the pandemic, that our health became our priority. Because if you're in bad health, doesn't matter if it's COVID or different issues, you're going to have a much harder recovery. Yeah. On the extreme case, you have clients, one client in particular, she's amazing. She's in her 70s now. Uh, with severe rheumatoid arthritis. So again, this is an autoimmune disorder. The treatments are usually, you see this advertised on TV, um, Humira, Scalara, all these immunosuppressive medications and corticosteroids. This is like hardcore medication. 
she failed all of them. I mean, it, this worked for a while, then it didn't work, then this worked for a while, and she was in a bunch of meds. And you can follow this with blood markers. There's rheumatoid factor and inflammatory factors like C-reactive protein, and everything was highly elevated in her. So she started, it was about probably seven years ago that she came? Ten. Ten years ago, well, uh, doing cryo with us. And within months, she was able, because she was referred by rheumatologists who just given up. I mean, you know, so we get some of these harder cases where, well, you don't have medications for anymore. What else can I do for you? Well, why don't you go there, right? And she is off all medications after a few months with absolutely normal blood markers. The disease is still there, but it's, you know, it's because it's chronic, but it's absolute in, it's in remission. And she maintained that throughout these 10 years. She yeah, comes she's, in. She's been now in remission for. What do you say, five times a week? Uh, she comes like now less. She travels a lot. Yeah. So when she went to a different cryo places yeah. with not the right temperature, she said she it the arthritis flares up. Yeah. But she's in remission now for almost ten years, and every I mean, April no, she comes in. No medication in, at all. No medication, and she yeah. tried everything. Yeah. And we're talking about a seventy-two-year-old yeah. woman. And, and, and yeah. beyond that, what's interesting, yeah. she also has follow up. A lot of times, when you have rheumatoid arthritis, it affects other tissues. So there's a uh, coronary issues, coronary arteries, uh, you get occluded and all these things. And she also had that checked and absolutely clean. So that was, that's amazing. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that everybody with rheumatoid arthritis will have that same result, but I think it's promising. And when you think about a modality that only involves temperature, where your risk really are limited to skin irritation or skin burns, right? That's, that's pretty wild. Plus, you have other benefits. I mean, again, you, can, you have uh, boost up your metabolism. People do this as an adjunct to help them uh, lose body fat. It converts your regular fat to brown fat, which is actually very helpful. And then you can burn off a lot of uh, calories easier. So there's, there's benefits. But yeah, those cases motivate us to, to say, hey, we want to keep the level of excellence with temperature that we have. Because we cost more energy to get colder, of course, you know. So we have higher costs to run our machines. But it's important because of people like that. We have a bunch of these people coming that need that that treatment. That's all. That's all bread and butter people that come. When you think about it, it's it's a cheap treatment for them. Our membership for the month is what three sixty. What is it? Three forty nine. Three forty nine. So it comes so down to eleven, twelve dollars. You can go as session. many times as you want. Yeah, once, once a day. Once a day. Once a day. And, and once we open seven days a week, right? So yeah. it's a twelve dollar a day treatment. When you think back, or when she thought back to medications that were prescribed, man, this is in the so thousands, much more. right? Yeah. Right, right. So again, I mean, can't advertise officially works for everybody. The FDA still says you can't uh, use uh, specific language on that. But in my opinion, I mean, no matter what modality it is, if you should always use modalities first that are non-pharmacologic in nature, because you always go to meds. Yeah. But most medications are band-aids. I mean, you know, you 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 kind of covering shift. something, right? And sure. you, you might, man, but you have. A lot of uh, issues with that as well. A lot of uh, unwanted issues that come. There's a burden that comes with it, right? What's big picture for you guys as you think about, you know, where do you want to take this company? What do you want to do? How many people you guys want to help? What's the, where would you like to be in five? So so you're like 12 years in, 14 years in, where would you like to take it? So we're expanding on, uh, so the cryo will be our mainstay modality, but we just now recently started using umbilical cord stem cells. So we're evolving a bit. Again, another non-pharmacologic modality, right? Which is actually char- characterized by the FDA as um, uh, tissue transplant, but it is stem cell umbilical cords from umbilical cords from healthy births, you know. So we want to go more along those lines to expand a bit, but we also are focused a bit more on just spreading the word. We're not going to open a lot of clinics all over the states. We were in New York for a while. It's hard for us to manage other places. We like to see good cryoplaces pop up so that the, that the modalities are used. Sure. And I want to educate more. We want to focus a bit more on education. So we have a YouTube channel, an Instagram channel, where we talk about these things, where we discuss modalities, where we uh, talk about not only what we do, but I, I talk about different topics on there. But really inform people what's available. My goal really is for people to be able to take their health more in their own hands. Because what we've been taught so far now, if you get, you just do, here's your standard American diet. Just, just, if you're sick, then later come to us. Here's your pills, and here's your diagnosis. And that's not how it should be, and it doesn't need to be that way. And educating people how to take care of their health, how to decrease inflammation in their body, how to prevent disease, how to help improve existing conditions. I think that's really where I see our future a bit more in that in that realm. And then you know we have the three locations here.
Yeah, tell people where they are. West Hollywood on La Cienega and Beverly Boulevard, and we have one in Marina del Rey and Woodland Hills. Nice. So please come nice. and yeah. visit us. Yeah. 20 seconds for free, huh? Wow. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Do you think that's enough? We, we thought about it, but, but since we <laughs> get a feeling, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's not enough. It's not enough for, for I'll say this. For me, it wasn't that bad. You know, yeah. as someone who cold plunges, right. I, yeah. I did the three minutes. I did 2.30 first and three minutes yeah. the second and the third time. And it felt great. And it's more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Than Way more comfortable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Way more comfortable. But, but that's because you have trained your body to deal with an uncomfortable situation. This was easy for you. I think usually yeah. when uh, we have first time clients and they freak out, they mentally not prepared properly. So we're doing actually, like we want to help the client to to really be mentally prepared because you walk in in this cold room and you get hit by this cold air. And it's usually people when, uh, that don't have the breathing under control. So I think number one is breathing through the nose in and your mouth out like yoga breathing or meditation breathing. And then knowing that you're like in this cold environment and you're not able to see and after a few sessions, few sessions in, it's going to get much easier and much more doable. It's just the first initial session where people are a little bit, yeah, scared. I mean, you, were, you, did, you did great, but you had also great prep because you were... The breathing you, thing, I think, is probably the thing that yeah. most people need to learn in general. It's like your first response if you've never experienced any sort of pain of that kind or, or just difference. It's, they, it's, you freak it's a out, shock because it's, it's such it's a an natural yeah. temperature that your body right. doesn't know what to do with that. And um, I mean, you think about it. So your your body thinks you're going to die. <laughs> and if you were in there for 50 minutes, you'd be a popsicle, right? I mean, yes. But it's absolutely safe between uh, one and a half to three minutes, right? But your body doesn't really know that. So it mounts all these um, mechanisms to survive as long as possible in this hostile temperature. And that's upregulating metabolic rate to produce more heat and energy, right? It is conserving blood flow to the core and brain to keep those functions up. And then when you come out, it flushes out. I mean, it's, it's amazing. The, the blood flow you get from this alone is fantastic, you know, hard to make anything else. But, but yeah, but once you've done it, you feel euphoric after. It triggers the optimization of hormones. I mean, you know, you can actually improve your testosterone. You can, you can have certain factors really uh, optimized just by virtue of, of freezing, right? And then, of course, you know, when you come out, these endorphins are kicking in and um, you feel fantastic. But once you've done it once, the, the anxiety, not everybody has this, but the people that have initial anxiety after the first time, they're fine. Yeah. You know, what else should anxiety. people know? What do you want to leave people with? I think key thing is come check it out. I mean, you know, yeah, we freeze it for 20 it. seconds, check it out. But also think of ways to bring down inflammation. Don't always listen to the medical establishment that you need all these pills. You might need some. But, you know, there's, there's ways to improve your health. And, um, again, we like to teach. We like to show you what we offer to bring that inflammation. We're not going to push anything on you. I think that's the main thing there. And if, if, if something's a fit, that's great. And maybe check out our YouTube and Instagram channel where we talk about some of these things. It might be, it might is be that just at CryoHealth? No, cryo mine is under my name, uh, okay. Jonas Kuna, MD. He does all the education. That's and right. And then um, yeah. the Instagram is also under Jonas Kuna, MD, yeah, right? Yeah, at Jonas Kuna. And at Cryo yeah. Healthcare, of course, yeah. we have a social media yeah, as and, well uh, over there. I think, yeah, keep working at your own health. Improve your own health. Don't give up if you're kind of uh, weighed down by some chronic ailment or something. You know, things can get better. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you for Thank coming you on. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Diego. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.